Hey there, how there, ho there. It's Jeff Cutter Historical Diamond with another Degrassi video. And this time, we're going to talk about the prelogue to, prologue, excuse me, to my uh, new video series that I will be releasing in December 2019. So basically, today is Saturday, November 30th, 2019. And this video will be basically me telling you about my plans to do stuff and basically um, other stuff. So anyway, what I plan to do is for each of the 18 seasons of Degrassi, I'm going to go over the, the storylines that really, the episodes that really got to me and like the storylines make sense in each of the Degrassi series from Next Generation Season 1 to Next Class being the final season, season 18. So anyway, yeah, so I will do that and I'll give the top, and I'll give the top, the MVP of the season, like who I think is the best um, character in each season. Of course, um, each character can only be done once, so basically I'll talk about who I think is the MVP. You know, best episode, worst episode, like I give you those statements, um, my overall impressions of the season, and all that, and lots of other things. Now, do note that I would be talking about, like, first run, talking about a first run, but the problem with me is that I only watched the first few seasons, um, first run, and then basically it was just off and on for the rest of the series because, you know, I had other things working for me. So I can't really give you my super impressions, but I can give you the impressions based on what the Degrassi Reddit has said. So anyway, this episode is called How We Got Here. That basically is the Degrassi Next Generation story. So, as everyone knows, that CBC greenlit some show called Kids of Degrassi Street in the late 70s, early 80s. And they had like hmm, 15, 20 episodes or something like that. They basically had a certain kid and then basically just a story about them. It was kind of weird that they didn't really go into a full season and all that. And then in 1986, they decided, no, what was 86? Um... Well, 86, 86-ish, they started making a new show called um, Degrassi Junior High because they want to tackle people's problems in junior high and all that. Of course, this is the 1980s, so basically things were a lot different and all that. So, you know, first season of junior high had some riveting topics. The first ever episode dealt with sexuality with Stephanie trying to use sex to sell herself to be student council president and getting Fola to help her out. But Fola, unfortunately, doesn't feel that well being Stephanie's right-hand girl. And with her family basically forcing their Eastern European ways on her, like, you know, you have a certain amount of degree of things to do, like making her a slave or something like that. So, yeah, I kind of have that thing. But anyway, um, no, it was Kiss Me Step. That's the episode called. Now, it's funny how all the Degrassi um, Junior and Degrassi High um, episodes didn't really have the sum titles in their name. Basically, Degrassi Next Generation did that all the way to Next Class. Well, Next Class did the hashtag thing. But, hmm. So anyway, the first season of junior high the 11th episode was called it's late that was when spike gets pregnant by shane and you know it's strange seeing teenage pregnancy in a show so that breaking a taboo if you will but yeah cbc decided to do that and they did well they actually won an international emmy for it and you know well they co-produced it with some station in boston so boston had a Hard to play too. So yeah, it was weird seeing you know Degrassi Junior High and weird to see a character be pregnant at like fourteen years old and all that. And of course the debate was whether the baby would be aborted or not, but it never did. Spike and her parents decide that she needs to keep the baby and all that. By the end of like, by the start of season two, there were a couple of changes. Um, Stephanie was out 
as the lead as the person. And the actress who played Stephanie actually got a a nice plum TV role. Some some TV show on CTV. I think it's called Learning the Ropes with El Lyle El Sado. Like you know, I don't know what her name her second name is. I know it was Nicole something, but she got the role. She got a role with Learning the Ropes from CTV, and it was a situation of comedy that basically this private school teacher has to hide the fact that he wrestles at times. And the weird thing about that is that there was there's real um, NWA wrestling, and WWF would not do that, but NWA, like the Road Warriors and Ric Flair were in the, that show. That's kind of an underrated show, if you ask me. But anyway, so she got the role. And it was learned that, you know, Arthur and Stephanie's family won the lottery and Stephanie went to a private school, mostly because of Stephanie's um, advantage, trying to take advantage of other kids and all that. And then Arthur stays with Yick, of course. Arthur and Yick are best of friends from two different cultures. Arthur being a rich white guy and Yick being, you know, from a boat person from Vietnam or something like that. It was actually nice seeing Arthur and Yick in that episode called The Experiment. Basically, when Yick is accusing Mr. Raj of playing favoritism with Yick, Arthur writes some kind of paper that Raj reads out to the class and learns that, you know, Yick was just upset that he thought he was being perceived as that. So Yick and Raj both agree to disagree on things and call them so, and call a clean slate. Both of them learn better. So we got ourselves another, like, Arthur and Yick thing in the younger crew with Bartholomew Vaughn and Scooter. Bartholomew being a white guy with the white, with the blonde curly hair and Scooter being black. All that. We get introduced in season two to Dwayne, who basically is a foil to po Joey, who, a bully to Joey. Although Joey sometimes asks to be bullied because of his mistreatment of other people. I think Dwayne was standing up for the kids, but unfortunately, Scooter refused to have Dwayne near him because, you know, Dwayne's being bullied. So season two is basically when we get the whole story about, you know, Spike's pregnancy and all that. And unfortunately, the fact that the school kicks her out because they don't want the pregnancy to affect the other students and all that. Of course, this is the mid-80s and, you know, understanding things was not in the or form. It's like it's like the AIDS thing in Degrassi High with Dwayne and all that. Like, Dwayne was a good person, but, you know, he caught AIDS or HIV. I think it was HIV. Well, he caught something from a chick. It wasn't his fault. He just had sex with someone who was HIV or AIDS positive. So the fact of the matter is that, you know, Dwayne and Joey used to have all these fights and all that. It was kind of weird even into the high school days. Well, um, season two, if memory serves me right, was also the season when Wheels lost his adoptive parents. I actually thought that they never talked about Wheels' parents being adoptive parents, but in Parents' Night, season one, they actually talked about it. So practically what ends up happening is that Wheels is upset that his parents refused to have him hang out with um, Snake and Joey, basically the, the sit remedy and all that. And you know, they're, all the parents basically are unhappy that they're hanging out together. Will sneaks off with Joey and thinks that the, the parents called the cops on Wheels because Wheels wasn't home. But it was worse than we anticipated as Wheels' grandmother actually comes in and says that they both died in a car crash involving a drunk driver. So Wheels doesn't have any parents. And Wheels' his grandma and grandpa, I think his grandpa is, um, had an accident or something. He has something, but I don't think he really speaks in that, um, to, like, in the, uh, in the season, in the series. I might be wrong. I probably am wrong. So anyway, we got to talk about that season two. If, if memory serves me right, season two was also when Caitlin had the problems with epilepsy, you know, having those seizures and all that. And she refused to take her medicine. Because she didn't want to seem weak and all that. But she hadn't learned that she needed her medication and she could be a go-getter. Well, too. Kayla was a year younger than, like, Joey and all that. Joey, I think, was held back after season one because of his lack of learning and all that. Yeah, season one. And I think season two was also, if memory serves me right, was season two the 
season that Lucy and her friend nearly got groped by the substitute teacher because Radich was in the hospital for an appendix attack? I'm not sure. I remember season, I don't remember season three that much. And all that. I think season two was also when, you know, Shane, Shane you know, Spike, Spike's baby's daddy um, had a conflict. His parents, well, his dad was a minister and all that. Basically, his dad was basically sending him away to a boarding school, saying that you'll never have to deal with a pregnancy. But Shane said he wants to help the baby because the baby needs a father and all that. You know, all that. And, you know... Shane is willing to step up to the plate, in a sense. Of course, Shane and Spike welcome a new addition, Emma, to the world. And, you know, Shane gives half his allowance to Spike for the care of the baby and all that. And thankfully, it's working. However, when Shane decides to use his half of the money for a concert ticket, Spike is peeved. Rightly so. And after the concert, Tim, one of the characters, uh, uh, one of the black characters, gives Shane some kind of ecstasy, I think ecstasy or something like that. Shane takes it and then he falls off a bridge or something. He doesn't die, like, but he's r really brain damaged, basically, to the point that, you know, he's incompetent. And he goes to a special school for someone with bad brain function. And basically, it's like all that. And of course, the season three finale was, of course, the finale to Degrassi Junior High, which led to Degrassi High, and that there was a prom and all that. Joey was going to take Caitlin, but Joey also had a deal with his parents of if he does well enough, he can go to the prom. Unfortunately, Joey fails. He doesn't fail, but fails to get a B in French. And Joey tells Caitlin that Caitlin's miffed, but Joey had, but Joey tried to explain that he had to deal with his parents. However, Caitlin does understand, and Joey's mom actually does allow Joey to go. After all, I mean, it was close, but French, you know, it's a tough language to maneuver around. So anyway, yeah, benefit of the doubt, Joey goes with Caitlin, and then Scooter, and I think Kathleen. I think that's the girl. Like, they play tag and all that, and then they accidentally do something with combustible materials in a door and basically starts a huge fire. And thankfully, no one dies through the fire. Of course, you know, with wheels and all that, it was, it was shocking to see wheels, like, fall off the rails and all that in season two because of lots of his grand, really taking his grandparents for granted. I know there were other people like Kathleen, Maya, um... Michelle, uh, Arthur, uh, there were a lot of characters that were, like, decent characters and all that. So we go into Degrassi High, and, you know, Joey, Snake, and Wheels get pranked by the, by the high schoolers, basically, Ninerd, if you will, which is a term for, basically, if you're an older person, you want to send a grade nine, like, governor, or initiate, I'm in high school. I got bit by not initiation. I will admit that, but thankfully everything was better in grade 12. For me, high school was not really the best thing because in grade 9, 10, 11, it just seemed like, you know, I tried things and then, of course, you know, me being an Aspie and all that and all my Aspie things like the hand flying, the staring around, the speech thing. But grade 12 was much better. I made an admission in grade 12 to be a better person. And I was a better person to a lot of people. Although sometimes I think I stepped, overstepped my boundaries at times. And I will admit that. You know, I finished my high school in four years. I know that, well, I know there's not, there's going to be plenty of non-Ontarians watching this video. But in Ontario, in the late 90s, early 2000s, we had from grade 9 to 12, and then there's a fifth thing called OEC. Basically, it was grade 13. It was just preparation for college and all that. The government cut that down. So, basically, we had two graduating classes at the same time. Well, if you weren't in OEC, you had to take grade 12 courses again. 
But anyway, yeah, so you had five years of high school graduation. Bad timing. Sorry about that. So four years. So basically it was a double cohort year, which was terrible for universities and colleges across the province because now you had two graduating classes looking for spots. I ended up taking a gap year before I got my computer programming idea from Conestoga College. It's a local college here in Kitchener where I live. So anyway, yeah. So yeah, so Degrassi High, it dealt with four high school topics. One of the best episodes from Degrassi High, and someone posted this on the Reddit, was a, a Halloween episode, She Lives or something. I don't know what it was called, but oh man, I, I watched it. It was great seeing Lucy doing a horror, horror movie and getting lots of help from her friends and all that. It was pretty good. Lucy didn't like the outcome, but Mr. Fishbaum said that, you know, it was your first movie. Now you know what to improve on. It was nice. Well, of course, Spike went into the high school with a very young Emma, like one or two years old. There was kind of a preschool or something like that because, you know, then Spike can take Emma into the school without any problems and all that. And of course, Shane, you know, having that brain damage thing, he did bump into um, Spike in that one up. And that a uh, horror movie episode. You can tell that Shane tries to make sense of things, but he kind of calls her a jerk and all that. But that's kind of the great thing. So anyway, what ends up happening is that they go through tribulations at high school, like Joey trying, Joey finally learning that his, he has learning problems and, you know, he tries to get the help he wants, but he doesn't want to be called a dimwit or something. I think I don't think he said the R word. Now, if you know what the R word is, obviously, I can't use it, even though I've been called the R word. Because I don't do it because that makes me a hypocrite. And that's one thing I don't want to be. So as is. So yeah, we've had some nice things. We got talked about Simon and Alexa, basically the it couple at Degrassi. All that. Joey trying to be with Caitlin. Caitlin rejecting him for, for clothes, who was this older student that had the hair tied back and all that, and the mustache, the ponytail and the mustache, jeez, that's like David Seaman. That, he's a, he was a famous goalie for the England national soccer team, who fucked it up in 2002 against Brazil. But anyhow, um, so yeah, he was romantic towards Caitlin, but unfortunately he left Caitlin high and dry in a bid to, like, for animal testing, ruined animal testing. So Chloe basically, made Caitlin take the fall for it. And I'm surprised that Chloe, I don't think, got in trouble with this because I think Caitlin probably would have turned around on Chloe. Of course, it's spelled Claude, but it's Chloe. So anyway, yeah, so Caitlin having problems with Chloe, and of course, Chloe having troubles with his family and all, dynamics and all that. It was scary seeing Chloe decide to kill himself right in the middle of them talking about doing a, a, a fun play, a fun pageant at the Grassy High, like they usually do. That episode was very iconic and all that. You know, Claude says his goodbye to Caitlin. Caitlin brushes him off, not knowing that Claude was going to kill himself. So Claude basically goes into the washroom with a gun and ends it. Snake, unfortunately, sees it because Snake has a bowel attack. He goes to the bathroom, and then all of a sudden he sees a pair of lights sticking up and blood, all that. He opens the bathroom stall and goes, and runs and tells Radich, who now is the, uh, the vice principal of Degrassi High. The high school principal is unseen, just like Degrassi Junior High's main guy, that the, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on his name. Lawrence, Mr. Lawrence was never seen. He always had the intercom with Doris's faithful um, secretary. But anyway, yeah. So anyway, Raj and Snake basically go in there and talk about uh, go find the body, and then you know they they go through the class. All the classmates talk about suicide and was it warranted and all that. People said that Claude should not have killed himself. A lot of people said that, you know, it might have been a selfish act because he made Degrassi feel bad about them. I feel bad about themselves. And then, of course, you know, Joanne, poor Joanne, she had some difficulties 
was living, and then all of a freaking sudden, she felt fine, but she felt like she had flowed and all that. But everyone comforts her. And Brad, she was in the room talking to that class, and she he tells Joanne that, I don't know how much more you can do. And he makes a very poignant speech saying that we feel overwhelmed sometimes, but the best thing to do is not kill ourselves. Because once we do, everything is over. That was that was one of the proudest moments I can stand. But, you know, he was caring for that point. Badge was more of a caring principal than we all thought he was. Badge actually attended Reels' um, adopted parents. The, the, that funeral, he's, a, he's attended a few weddings. He attended Craig's dad, Albert's um, funeral and all that. And I bet you he probably might have attended Rick's funeral because no one else from Degrassi would ever come close. Or, I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah, it's kind of weird how Code's death actually paralleled with Rick's death. Now, Rick didn't go to the school to kill himself, although that freeze frame at the end of Time Stands Still Part 1 was different. So anyway, yeah, like, it was weird seeing Snake and Radish be a central part of that storyline, the those two storylines. Snake, Snake, of course, telling Radish about Rick, I mean, not Rick, I don't know, Claude's dead body and all that, and, you know, and then, you know, they're, they were discussing about Rick and, you know, them being at each other's throats. And then at the time, there was, like, a drama club pageant or something like that. In, in Degrassi High, Spike comes up with the bright idea that they should do it as a benefit. We have to move on from this. We can do it, but we can honor Paul's memory, like something about suicidal teens, and it's a big hit. And the worst part is that was never discussed. I know Dracula in Degrassi Next Generation was talked about, but unfortunately Raj put the kibosh on it because of its gory nature. And I can understand that. But there was no like compromise, unlike the Degrassi High episode. I mean, if there was a compromise, I think in most ways it might have helped the student body feel better. And who knows, maybe Raj might have saved his butt, and maybe he would have stayed around to the last year before either being forced out or retiring, rightfully so. He could have had a better ending than what the problem was. And I did make a Reddit post about, do you think that Snake's anger towards Raj was mostly because he wanted Raj to take responsibility for his actions, whereas Snake, of course, took responsibility for his lack of effort. And only one person responded, but it got a lot of points on the Reddit community saying that, yeah, he just wanted Raj to fess up, and, you know, Raj would never talk about these things. I think, in my mind, he may have known he was a dead duck and was just trying to play play the string out, if you will. But anyway, yeah, Degrassi High was great. I mean, but we saw wheels, you know, fall off the rails, because, you know, he was with his grandparents, he was taking advantage of his grandparents, basically he was kicked out. He didn't want to accept responsibility for all that stuff. He ended up swiping money from Joey. He actually ended up, I think, going back to his grandparents. But he was working on the side, you know. He was getting better. And then came schools out that nice movie that I've never seen. Basically, I look at the synopsis, and basically, Alexa and Simon get married. Joey and Caitlin still have relationship problems. Joey actually hooks up with a, a girl. It's not Cindy, it's some other girl. Te Teresa, I think? Or someone. Tessa. I don't know who Joey hooked up with. But that character got pregnant and basically aborted the baby. And Snake makes the comment that Joey is lucky. He fucks a girl and fucks over Caitlin. Something like that. Joey and Caitlin have a problem and, you know, Caitlin breaks it up with Joey, rightfully so, but Joey tries to make things right and all that. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the twins, Heather and, uh, oh gosh, I'm blanking on the second twin. Claire? No, Heather and someone. They're, they're twins. They're twins and one of them got pregnant and had an abortion or something like that. And there was a lot of anti-abortion people turning them. Erica, that's it, Erica and Heather, that's it. Yeah, they had drama with those twins. Um, 
Yeah, so it goes out and Wheels actually ends up taking Lucy for a car drive to get chips. But unfortunately, Wheels is drunk and Wheels gets an accident, injures Lucy's face. Basically, he kills a kid. A kid dies in that accident and he's put in jail. And Wheels realizes his thing. And of course, you know, that was, that played out in season three of Next Generation when Snake goes through a chemo and Wheels see them, but Wheels tells Snake it's not the end of the world because, you know, Wheels got in that accident and he got in jail and he just wanted to end his life and all that, but he kept going and Snake felt better. Unfortunately, Neil Holt, the actor who played Wheels, ended up dead. I think there was a five-year gap between his death and when it was actually realized. It was like, how the hell did this go on for so long? So anyway, yeah, yeah, you know, Joey, I don't know how much Snake, not much. Snake actually does take care of Emma with um, Spike because, you know, Shane's not there. So, yeah, that was kind of creepy. So, anyway, yeah, so school's out. It was a it was a nice finale. And then everyone's like, oh, poor Degrassi, they're gone. But then, seven years later, in 1999, there was a renewal for Degrassi. There was this C CBC... Um, teen show called Jono Vision. Basically, it was a talk show talking to teens and, you know, they're talking to, like, teen issues and all that. Jonathan Torres, Torrens was the host. And if you know Jonathan Torres, he, Torrens, he's, he's J-Rock in the Trailer Park Boys. It's a Canadian show that makes a mock, it's like a mockumentary and all that. It's kind of cool, Trailer Park Boys, but I did not like Mr. Lazy at one bit. So regardless, J Rock show did an episode about Degrassi, like a two episode thing about Degrassi, and he brought out some famous people from Degrassi's past, like Yick, um, personally Kathleen, one who played Liz, uh, that's being Spike's friend. Um, Spike was brought out, Snake was there, Joey was there. Too bad about Caitlin. I wish Caitlin's after Stacy. Michigan was there. Uh, they, they had Dwayne, they had, what was it, BLT or some, whatever his name is? Um, it wasn't him. Uh, I don't know. There was a few other ones. Oh, Stephanie they brought out. Yeah, I think I said. And then they brought out two adults, Miss Avery and Mr. Radich came in. It was amazing to hear Radich actually saying that he came out of a theater school well, Dan Woods came out of theater school, and then all of a fucking sudden, you know, he was not, he, he wanted to be an apprentice in the theater arts, but now he was being the head honcho and all that. It was kind of hard. And he actually said Mr. Andrew would probably be the dean of education for the Mike Harris government. Whatever. That's being provincial government. So anyway, yeah, it was nice. And then they talked about, like, you know, Degrassi in the colleges or being in a nursing home. Or something like that. And that brought Degrassi back to life. And then, of course, Linda and Steven, the co creators of Next Generation, said, Yeah, what about Degrassi's kid? And they know that Emma was born in 1988 and said, Let's follow her into junior high and all that. So they do that. And then, you know, we get a lot more characters. We get a lot of. Um, um, cameos from the Degrassi High people in season one. Mostly, the first episode was called Mother and Child Reunion, and all that. So yeah, so they 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 showed repeats of Degrassi Junior High and High like twice a day, um, five days a week on CBC during the week. So basically, we got ten episodes, and they were all like you know replayed over and over again for like two or three years. And then CTV picked up the idea to do the Degrassi reboot. I wish CBC did that, but CTV got the reboot. And all that. And as I once said, the rest is history. So yeah, 18 seasons of the Degrassi series all in a row. I liked it. I liked the fact that they went through the Degrassi. They went there, they did some shocking topics, they had some great characters and all that. Cool. So anyway, um, look for my season and review videos coming up in December.
It should be a blast. Um, the season of review videos will probably be in a different Degrassi playlist I'll share with you. So anyway, this is Jeff Diamond saying so long. Carol Peterson. Good night.